Hello, uh, my name is Dr. Catherine Hewlett, and it's a pleasure to be with you um, today. I've been asked by Lenny from Displert to provide a recording to you for your um, residency and story um, tellers table read. Uh, and I've been asked to talk about creativity. So I'll just briefly talk about creativity and share my screen. Thank you. Okay then, um, as I said, I'm a doctor and my doctorate was in the socio-cultural investigation of the visual dyslexic neurodivergent cognition. And within that research, creativity was much discussed. And what do we mean by it? I had to do a substantial literature review and out of my literature review, I came up with a whole range of commonalities. Having looked at a wide range of literature. And my research found that in the main, creativity is owned by all of us. Uh, nobody has um, a definite ownership of creativity. However, there were common factors to creativity across all of us as well. And those were to conceptualize across disciplines, navigate complexities for a solution, and the ability to make links within innovative idea making. This is all very uh, familiar to us neurodivergent people. Researchers within a socio-cultural construct, because I recognised that creativity was also about our own internal conceptual construction, our own views of reality, and how that what that meaning meant to us. Within that was the personal effort, interest and experiences. So creativity is owned by all of us, but it is very much about our own personal experiences too, and how we um, develop those ideas and concepts with those experiences informing that. My research statement was about um, how visual creative practice is produced, and is this through, through the skill of thinking within a dimensional context that is both divergent and multifaceted? And that you would say that is creativity. And I was looking at the neurodivergent approach to visual creative thinking that happens particularly out of the mainstream. And this is something that Lenny and Displa are so good at, is collecting talent from out of the mainstream to make it mainstream actually. So my research questions were about what are the visual thinking approaches of neurodivergent artists and how does this approach impact on practice? I was particularly interested to know if their thinking was any different from neurotypical people in terms of their practice within creativity. And what is a socio-cultural value? So I was examining particularly dyslexic and neurodivergent visual artists. This is cross-disciplinary, of course it would be, because I am neurodivergent myself. And of course, my brain is going off tangent, trying to make all those links. So of course it would be cross-disciplinary, including sociology, psychology, and education. And with the, that, within that was a mixed method uh, of data collection that underpinned that philosophy. Okay, so there are a whole range of tools that I got involved in with my research, including the use of actual visual practice. So a substantial percentage of the research uh, was linked to actual exhibitions, and here are some of the Vimeo links. And those exhibitions proved the validity of my research, and actually there was something worthwhile investigating in terms of visual dyslexic cognition. Okay, so those tools all linked to a comparative analysis, uh, an interpretive comparative analysis, because I was making links, uh, and the tools were a survey and interviews, and I interpreted um, those uh, ways of collecting data through word clouds and key words <clears throat> and clusters of references, of which there are some examples here. This is an example of some neurotypical thinking. 
uh, and you can see it's quite logical in terms of reflection, feedback, reading and critical analysis. Again, neurotypical people, visual artists, reading, discussion, talking. Whereas when we get to the dyslexic neurodivergent um, visual artists, they're much more obsessed about writing, really enjoyed writing, not so much reading, really enjoyed the actual words. So poetry was important to them. Um, and, and here's another word cloud, which is looking at discussion. So you can see people are um, searching their creativity, investigating their creativity with a range of means, and particularly the neurodivergent visual artists through discussion, projects, um, looking, opinions, writing. All my key finding, findings, my key findings were this, that the neurodivergent visual artist had an ability to think in flowed movement in a multidimensional framework. This meant they could actually visualize things in their mind's eye. They had the ability to move back and forward in a move, movement way in their mind's eye. So when I asked them the question, how do you remember your day? They could reel the, the day's events back in a filmic way. So here we have, Flowed thinking, thinking points of reference, flexibility to adapt, convergence of thinking, filmic movement in multidimensional contexts. So these were our key findings. Um, in the main, most visual neurodivergent artists would say that they had not even thought that this was of value. And it was so inherent in their way of thinking, they thought everybody else did it. Well, they didn't, because when I asked the neurodivergent, the non-neurodivergent ar ar artists, the neurotypical artists, how they viewed their day, they did not view it in a filmic way. And in fact, it found quite hard to do it when I asked them if they could. So I, my, my main finding was that this is a value. This thinking, this creative thinking is of great value to uh, society uh, and, to do the, and to do with the visual arts. A huge percentage of people think visually in flow, in flowed way. If you look at the percentage of neurodiversion of people in our society, between 10 and 20 percent. So the contribution to our society in terms of economics um, and culture is huge. So here's the slide about what I have just said. There is an economic and intellectual contribution to be had here. So quotes from some of the um, visual uh, neurodivergent artists. You just do it. And it's almost counter to intellectual analytical approach. It is something innate. I don't know, it just feels good, it feels right. Everything is very fast with incredible rushes. I've had to physically slow down as my thinking can get faster and faster. It is like a spiral. I keep getting spun round and round. So that's my mini presentation for Displer and your roundtable discussion. I hope you found it of use uh, and it's a great pleasure to contribute to